Welcome to the BioBalance HealthCast, episode number 298. Anabolic is not a dirty word. BioBalance HealthCast features conversations about positive aging. Your hosts are Dr. Kathy Maupin, Medical Director of BioBalance Health and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging, and Brett Newcomb, a licensed professional counselor. Dr. Maupin and Brett are the authors of The Secret Female Hormone, the seminal work about hormone replacement therapy for women, which is available on Amazon or from Dr. Maupin's office at BioBalance Health. Dr. Maupin's office is currently accepting new patients. Dr. Maupin, is anabolic a dirty word? <laughs> it's been made a dirty word by, by I hate to say it, journalists and... Um, Shouldn't hate that. The Everybody FDA, hates journalists. well, Donald, not Donald really. Donald hates journalists. <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> that kind of... <laughs> in, a, in any case... Um, Actually, the politics of America has made anabolic a dirty word. They have taken a normal function of the human body, which is anabolic. Well, it's not a standalone word. No, it's not. You have to use anabolic as an adjective. But it's actually used in conjunction with other words that then have a a negative message, anabolic steroids. Or anabolic anabolic hormones, hormones. right. Yes. And so when they're used that way, they, they are used almost like a a marketing emblem to convey a message. There's a whole content that comes with that phrase when, when most people hear it because of what the media has done with it and the government mm-hmm. regulators have done with it. Mm-hmm. So what actually does anabolic mean? Anab- anab- an- anabolism, catabolism, and uh, is a function of the human body that goes on all the time that none of us think about. All of our tissues are growing and they are disintegrating, being broken down. So uh, anabolic, catabolic activity in your body is balanced. Still like your skin? You know, you shed skin and make new skin right. cells? Your skin, skin cells are alive at the bottom. They're, they're anabolic and they're growing. And then they come to the surface and, and peel off. They die and they peel off. So that would be like a, a catabolic event. And, and a healthy body does that every so many days. Yeah, a healthy body does it constantly. So your throughout bump, your lifetime, I mean, throughout your lifetime. Right. So so it's when you're an adult and you're done growing, mm-hmm. it is a balanced kind of a process that happens all the time. Your bones are being made and broken down at the same rate, and your bones stay the same until you lose testosterone, estrogen, and, or you take you have too much stress and you have too much cortisol. Because estrogen and testosterone are both anabolic, and then cortisol is catabolic. It breaks things down. So, so, so these two things are balanced in your body when you're normal, healthy, not old, not young. So your body's like a machine that has a regulatory system. Mm-hmm. And the purpose of the regulatory system is to maintain what we call equilibrium or homeostasis. Yes. And so like if uh, the startle effect, if, if I clap my hands and it startles you, you get an adrenaline surge. Your body immediately surges like fight or flight. What What's the danger? Oh, my gosh. And as soon as it checks out the environment and sees that there is no danger, then it calms itself back down. It right. does that through hormones. Yeah, uh, the the adrenal gland, gland sends out little motorcycle hops that run through your system saying, alert, 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 danger might be coming. And mm-hmm. then when they say, you know, call it off, nothing happened, then the, they recall uh, or stop sending out the uh, that, process, that, but, that process. But it stops so, sending it out. So what happens when you're startled, though, is yeah. when you're startled, or when you're in, let's say you're in fear, you, mm. you, you have some kind of uh, threat, your cortisol goes up, your epinephrine goes up so that you can fight or flight. You can, you can run or you can fight. But, but So the weights for the balance, for the scale, mm-hmm. some of those weights are anabolic. Yes. And they're designed to pull the scale up. And to some grow. are catabolic. They're designed to Break pull it down. down, like cortisol. Cortisol breaks breaks down your tissues, mm-hmm. breaks down fat primarily, but also uh, breaks down muscle, and it breaks those down so that you have immediate energy. So if you're taking steroids, you're breaking your muscle down, you're breaking your bone down, you're breaking your, um, I mean, steroids meaning corticosteroids, then you're also breaking down muscle. So you're using that for what should be turned into energy. But if we're giving steroids like cortisol to somebody, 
It breaks down things faster than you can build it back up. Is that like when you're diabetic or you're an athlete and you need to get a sugar high, you know, you're ready to do, you need to stress something out. So you eat a candy bar and all of a sudden you surge, but then you're too depleted afterwards. That is different. Oh, that's insulin. Okay. That's insulin. Which, and that's a different hormone. Right. But it does the same kind of thing when you, it does it by a more it insulin, less, in, less insulin. So more insulin is going to help you take your blood sugar that you eat mm -hmm. and put it into the cells and make energy. Right. So that would be something that is, is giving you energy. It may break down mm -hmm. your tissue to do so mm -hmm. because it needs energy. Its primary goal is to give you energy. Right. But if you have too much sugar, too much insulin, mm -hmm. then it makes fat because you're not using it. Right. So that's, so that's one of those processes, but the, the most obvious anabolic and catabolic processes are the stimulation or the lack thereof of growth hormone and testosterone. Those are the two biggies. Growth hormone is not a steroid, okay? Okay. It's just an amino acid that comes from the pituitary and, and stimulates the collection of all of the uh, substrates or the building blocks of muscle and bone, and it builds muscle and bone. When we're adults, when we're children, it makes us grow in height and size and helps us grow in muscle. So when we're, in, we're children, we're not totally balanced. We have much more anabolic mm -hmm. uh, activity than we do when we're adults. But when we get old. So the balance is as a child, you have the anabolic side really working hard, the catabolic not so much. It's just, it's just, and then when you get old, it reverses. Right. And we start breaking everything down. Mm -hmm. So... As soon as your testosterone and your growth hormone decrease, mm -hmm. then the balance is off and we start losing muscle, losing bone, osteoporosis, poor, you know, people walking around like this, poor muscle tone, inability to get around. We don't make hair as much. We don't make, we don't turn over skin. All of these things are catabolic activities that make us be, make us sick as we get older. Mm -hmm. And may and give us a give us an older look, but also we feel older. Our brains start shrinking. I mean, uh, these two hormones are huge. And what we've done in America is we've said testosterone's bad, growth hormones bad because some people abuse five percent of the population, and usually the younger population abuse it. Right. And and the FDA has not approved growth hormone for any disease of aging. I mean, growth hormone could be used wonderfully. There are studies that say that it helps you heal from a surgery quickly. It helps you get out of the ICU faster. It helps you, it, it literally helps you build back bone and muscle. But those are not approved usages. Right. And, and, and so physicians are at risk of losing their license. Right. Or getting I mean, it's legally. a big deal. It's not just, it's not just something that. I mean, growth hormone is one of the biggest policed medications there is out there. And we, and part of it is that doctors who think somebody needs it, that's our, our calling. And what we're supposed to be doing is give the person the medication or the hormone or the support or the treatment that they need. Doctors who ignore Mm -hmm. This end up losing their license, and well, they're they're not bad doctors. They're we, great doctors, but they look bad in the press. We actually just returned from a medical convention uh, for American Age Management Medicine, and we talked to several of the presenters, and the presenters were making the same case that Dr. Moffin is making that a growth hormone is a useful thing and a good thing and should be available to us medicinally for interventions. And so we asked them privately, are you pushing this politically? Are you trying to get the attention of the media to say, this is wrong, it needs to change? And every single one of them said, no, I'm not. I want to stay off of or below the radar of the FDA. I don't want them coming after my license. Because the DEA. They have to, they the have DEA is really the... That this is a bad thing, and they've decided for political reasons. Right. I mean, they. Not it's medical. not a medical reason. No, it's not a medical reason. But my question is... Do they hate old people so much they want us to die? Because that's that's it's what a they're doing. Conspiratorial concept. Well, it's my th it's my theory because why else would you limit what you give to people who are aging well, when I can tell you one reason. 
the status quo investments of big pharma for selling all of the medicines that they sell right. in lieu of giving you a, a, an affordable natural medicine that would solve the problem and not sell their products. That's true. So, That's true. Uh, you could take, instead of taking six medications for heart, cholesterol, um, almost every other, uh, high blood pressure, erectile dysfunction. erectile dysfunction, yeah, then you would take one, testosterone. Mm -hmm. And then the rest of those over time, like they did with you, or went hormone. away. Well, or yeah. growth hormone. Yeah. Well, I, the, way, the way I look at growth hormone is... It's, it's interesting, and the FDA doesn't approve this either. Um, growth hormone is necessary with testosterone when you've had a head injury. Okay. okay? When you've had a head injury like football and, players. And do they allow that? No. It's not approved for them either. It is, it, it, testosterone in general, when I see a patient, I don't need to give them growth hormone with their testosterone. Generally, I can give them testosterone and it stimulates the production of growth hormone. Two for one, cheap, not cheap, but much less expensive than six drugs a month. And, and, and growth hormone is pricey because of all of the regulations. So, so I can do both for one fee or one cost of a medication that I'm buying from a pharmacy. Then if I have a, a, a head injury patient, they need both. Mm -hmm. So we've found some substances that can actually stimulate growth hormone without being growth hormone that has none of the risks like of growth pre hormone. Precursors. Precursors like sermorelin. So what are, when you say none of the risks, what are the risks of growth hormone? Okay, so there are risks of growth hormone. Growth hormone has, if, if not given properly, can actually stimulate um, diabetes in someone. Okay, so okay. it can it can confuse type your one body. Or type two. Uh, it's, it's a combo kind of thing. It it has it has low insulin and it has both. Okay, insulin resistance and low insulin. Um, but it is it's one of those things that can cause that if not managed properly, which the doctors that I know know how to manage it, right. but don't use it. So um, and then the other thing is it can cause too much growth hormone in somebody who is. Abusing it mm -hmm. can cause can cause acromegaly, like you get this big brow. Your Neanderthal. Your, Neanderthal. Your, your bones grow, but not in the way you would think. They don't grow longer. They grow thicker. And so all the facial bones start getting angular and thicker. So that's not a good thing. It's not a good thing for your body either. Right. Too much growth hormone removes the fat from your body, and we all need some fat. It's not good to be 5% body fat because you need fat for when you're sick, you know? Um, I mean, fat is, is a good thing to have some of. Some of. Enough of. Enough of. So that you can, you can maintain your body. We use fat for energy. So that's an important thing. But in this case, I can't use growth hormone when I get somebody with a head injury. And, and the other thing that happens is at a certain point, at a certain age, when somebody's 85, 90, they need growth hormone and testosterone, even if they haven't had a head injury, because it, it ceases to stimulate that growth hormone production. Well, they need it in order to continue to be healthy and functional and independent. Right, without catabolizing. It, I mean, they don't need it to stay alive per se, but it... The but if you want to be in life. a nursing home yeah, and sit in a chair all day... Velcro to the wall. Right, but but if you want if you want to live in your own home and you want to do your own shopping and you want to drive and you want to be independent, which is... Now my goal yeah, <laughs> is absolutely. is you have to have anabolic hormones working in your body. When they all cease to work, all you're doing is breaking everything down and becoming a, basically a cripple. Your brain doesn't heal itself. Nothing heals itself. Mm -hmm. So you end up on many drugs. So it's that anabolic catabolic cycle again. Right. When, you, when you're young and the growth spurts are there and the growth hormone is there and your body is building and growing and filling in, mm -hmm. it's heavily anabolic. Right. And then when you get old, it reverses. It's mm -hmm. heavily catabolic. And so you, it's the deterioration of aging. But there can be interventions that resist the full impact of that. You're still going to age. Mm -hmm. you, you're still going to die. Uh, you know, something will something will get you, but still. But the quality of life that you have for the time that you have can be made better and reasonably inexpensively. Except that a lot of it's outlawed. 
or, or not accepted by medicine because of the or it's marketing. Been, it's of been pharma. vilified. So when patients come in and say, I'm going to give you testosterone, they go, <gasps> yeah. or if they come, not really to my office, because they know they're that's from the research, that's what they're usually coming for. But yeah. if I said, oh, I think that you're going to need some growth hormone stimulation, they go, <gasps> isn't that bad? Isn't that going to make me sick? Is that, you know, mm -hmm. so it's it's the thought it's the in the brain of our patients of our population that that both in some pa people testosterone and growth hormone are bad guys they're terrible and and that sprung from the misuse of testosterone and growth hormone by young people athletes athletes mostly athletes and or coaches and, and trainers. yeah or it's by young men who are little and they want to be big. Like a Charles Atlas, I mean, if you're not my generation, you know, but <laughs> there used to be a Charles Atlas commercial about this skinny guy on the beach who the bullies all came and kicked sand on him. And mm -hmm. so then he did the Charles Atlas workout of so many days and he came back and he was all buffed up and big and nobody bullied him Of course, him that anymore. doesn't really work, but... I but mean, it, it could better, work. Better living through chemistry. Yeah, but it could work, but it probably, he probably had some help. Yeah. But, uh, but, but, it, but it's this misuse that we judge an entire class of medication and a class of hormone. And we vilify it so that fear is all we think of. We feel fear when we hear those words, anabolic hormones, anabolic steroids. I mean, that is something that you go, oh, that's bad. You know, the classic way to manipulate people is to take a word and make it mean what you want people to feel like great about doing something or right. terrible about doing something right. so that you can make them either, even if they're offered a good treatment, they'll say, no, I shouldn't do that. It's dangerous. Well, they don't know the facts. And, and without attempting to impute any negative motives, the philosophical orientation of the regulators in American medicine <laughs> is aimed at saying you have to be able to prove that this medicine won't harm anybody. Anybody. And and so we've got to test it, we've got to regulate it, we've got to limit it because we don't want it doing any damage out there anywhere. And in other countries, Europe in particular, they do the exact opposite. They say, you have to prove that this medicine works to help people. Mm -hmm. And then when you find a category of people that it doesn't help or that it mm -hmm. damages, then we can define that, regulate that, mm -hmm. and control that right. so that those people are protected. You don't Which give is, this is the right to philosophy. those people. Well, you and I think so. But mainstream American medicine, the political system and the regulatory system has the opposite philosophy. And we are fighting every day to say, let's examine that. We think that it's not the best philosophy because you have and, and there may be ulterior motives or negative motives or uh, agendas beyond what's good health care. We think so in some cases, but we're not applying that to everybody universally saying, well, they're all bad guys. They're no, all bad people. But there are uh, some very powerful people that are that trying to protect strongly us. strongly in what they believe. They believe that all of us are too stupid to take care of ourselves. <laughs> I mean, I'm not kidding. That's really the philosophy. You're too stupid. You're not going to put a helmet on when you ride your motorcycle. So we're going to make it a law. So you're too stupid to... Or seatbelts. Yeah. You're too, or airbags. Well, or you're too smoking. stupid to choose not to use marijuana or to use it if it's medicinal. So we're going to protect you from that. We're going to protect you from growth hormone. We're going to protect you from testosterone. When in this case, it's damaging us. And that is so scary that there's something out there that we it's could actually Very much use. of a paternalistic approach. It is. I'm the daddy. I know better. And I'll tell you what you can Which do. Which in the age of women's lib should be shut down. <laughs> well, we open that can of water <laughs> Because, I mean, yeah, mom tells you, you know, mom says, this is good for you. You don't always do it. But dad says, you're doing this. You better do it. Because I have the power. Because I have the power. I, I have the hammer. And I'm, I'm going to take that away from you. Yeah. So, so it is, it is a paternalistic, that's right. It is a paternalistic kind of attitude that I, I didn't really think of it that way, but, but I did think about them thinking that we're not smart enough to manage ourselves and worse yet, that they're smarter than doctors. And that's, that's where I really, get the really, yeah. that's my, that's my, um, catch that I, I just get really unhappy about is that they think the politicians think they're smarter than we are now. I trained for 12 years so that they could be smarter than me. I mean, that's ridiculous. They don't even read their own documents. If I didn't do that, I'd be 
out of business. Well, it's kind of like the old argument between the specialist and the generalist. You know, you're a specialist. You have this specialized knowledge. You have a myopic vision about all the... Uh, in and of itself, it's not myopic, but their feeling is there, there's a larger mm-hmm. worldview. And if I'm a politician or if I'm a preacher, then I know better because I'm tapped into sources beyond your myopic vision. Because they won't let us have that vision. It's uh, not because we won't look. Yeah. It's because they won't let us in the door. They won't let us into that secret room. And so it, if we were in that secret room, I can guarantee you that it would not say that anabolic steroids in aging people were a bad thing. That is something that would protect us. So I'm very, I mean, on this subject, I don't have any doubt that they don't have data that would counter that. Every, every article I read is testosterone prevents heart disease. If you've had a heart attack, testosterone stimulates the growth of the heart muscle so that you can recover from your heart attack and not be an invalid. Testosterone treats heart uh, failure. Testosterone treats osteoporosis. It treats depression. It treats all the sexual problems that we have as we age. Uh, it, it treats depression of bipolar, not always the mania. So, so many, many of these things and more. So we began by saying the, the title, anabolic is not a dirty word. It isn't. And our hope is that you will listen to what we have to say today and start to think about that and begin to pressure your doctors and your politicians to change the system so that we're not focusing all this mass attention and negativity on trying to protect 5% of people that would abuse it, that we are saying this is available for the 95% of the population that may need it with the judgment and guidance of their physicians. If it's determined that this would be beneficial to you medically, then you should be able to have it. And we're going to get out of the way and, and let you have it, uh, and we'll look at those people that are abusing it, mm-hmm. and we'll deal with that 5% as we need to deal mm-hmm. with that 5%. So that would be the goal. So don't just be frozen out by negative terminology uh, that's been created through marketing and rulemaking. Uh, look at the facts. Look at the concepts. Talk to your doctor and talk to your politicians. We want this system changed. Thank you. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the BioBalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit BioBalanceHealth.com or call 314-993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at Facebook.com slash BioBalanceHealth. Find Brett Newcomb at BrettNewcomb.com. 